In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use partial fractions to evaluate an integral. And in this particular problem, we're taking the integral of x squared divided by quantity x plus 2 cubed. And we're going to use partial fractions because we have a rational function, a fraction here. And more specifically, we're going to need to use repeated linear factors because we have a repeated linear factor in the denominator. If we were to expand the denominator of this fraction, we would write it as, because we have this exponent here of 3, quantity x plus 2 times quantity x plus 2 times quantity x plus 2 because that exponent of 3 tells us that we have three factors of x plus 2. Now because this is x to the first power here, that's implied x to the first power, x to the first power, x to the first power, because it's x to the first, we can call this a linear factor, and therefore we have a repeated linear factor because x plus 2 is a linear factor that's repeated three times. So we need to recognize that we have a repeated linear factor, and when that's the case, here's what we do to get our partial fractions decomposition. First of all, we take our original function and we put that on our left-hand side. So we say x squared over quantity x plus 2 to the third power is going to be equal to, and now here's the tricky part about repeated factors. Because they're linear factors, in the numerator we're going to have a, b, and c, like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the original denominator, this x plus 2 to the third power. So we're going to say quantity x plus 2 to the third power. But when you have repeated linear factors, you have to include every lesser degree of that repeated linear factor. So we're going to have x plus 2 cubed, but then the next lesser degree would be x plus 2 quantity squared, and the next one would be x plus 2 quantity to the first power, which of course would just be x plus 2. So if we had originally had x plus 2 to the fifth, we would have had to include x plus 2 to the fifth, to the fourth, to the third, to the second, and then all the way down to the first, and that's where you stop. So here we start with x plus 2 to the third, and then we have x plus 2 quantity squared, and then we have x plus 2 to the first power, which is just x plus 2. So that's how we do the decomposition for any repeated linear factor, and of course these constants here are just a, b, and c because they're linear factors. Now what we want to do is simplify by multiplying both sides of our equation by the denominator from the left-hand side. So we multiply everything by x plus 2 to the third power. What that's going to do is cancel this denominator completely, leaving us with just x squared on the left-hand side. Over on the right, we're going to get this x plus 2 to cancel. We'll be left with two factors of it, since we had three factors here in the numerator when we multiplied by a, and just one factor in the denominator. So one factor cancels, leaving us with two factors. So we have a times x plus 2 squared. Then here we're going to get two factors to cancel of the three, leaving us with just one factor. So we'll say plus b times one factor of x plus 2. And then here we'll get the entire denominator, x plus 2 quantity cubed, to cancel with x plus 2 quantity cubed. So we'll just be left with c. Now we'll expand out the right-hand side. So we're going to say a times x plus 2 times x plus 2, because we have two factors right here. So x plus 2 times x plus 2, if we FOIL that out, we get x squared plus 2x plus 2x, or plus 4x, and then plus 4, plus, distributing the b, we get bx plus 2b plus c, and now if we distribute the a, we get ax squared plus 4ax plus 4a plus bx plus 2b plus c. Now we want to group like terms together, so we'll say x squared is equal to, we'll put all the x squared terms together, that's only ax squared, so we'll leave that, takes care of that term. Then we'll put all of the x terms together, or the x to the first power terms, well, that's 4ax and bx, so we'll say plus 4ax plus bx, that takes care of these two, and then we'll put all of our constant terms together, all the terms that don't involve x, which in this case is 4a plus 2b plus c, and that takes care of the rest of these. Now we want to factor out any of the x variables, so we'll say x squared is equal to, we'll put that a in parentheses and pull the x squared outside. Here we're going to factor out the x, so that's just going to leave us with 4a plus b, when we pull an x out of both terms, 4ax and bx, so we pull that x to the outside, then we still have our constants here, 4a plus 2b plus c. 
Now if you think about it, we could actually write this left hand side as x squared plus 0x plus 0 because 0x is still 0, 0 is 0. So by adding 0x and 0, we haven't actually changed anything and that would still be equal to this right hand side here. The reason we write it out like that is because we want to compare coefficients from the left and the right hand side. So what we would say here is that the coefficient on x squared on the right hand side is a. The coefficient on x squared on the left hand side is this implied 1 here, right? We have 1x squared. On the right hand side, the coefficient on x is 4a plus b. On the left hand side, the coefficient on x is 0. And then finally, the constant on the right hand side is 4a plus 2b plus c. The constant on the left hand side is 0. So the reason we do it like that is because now we can go ahead and set up equations. So here we can say 1 is equal to a or a is equal to 1. Here we can say 0 is equal to 4a plus b. And here we can say 0 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. And now we can solve this system of linear equations for values of a, b, and c. We already have here this value for a, so we want to go ahead and keep that there. But we know that a is equal to 1, so we can plug a equals 1 into both of the other two equations to eliminate that variable. So when we do that for this first equation, instead of 0 equals 4a plus 1, we're going to get 0 is equal to 4 times 1 is 4, so we get 4 plus b. And for the second equation here, instead of 0 equals 4a, we're going to get 0 is equal to 4 times 1, or just 4. So 0 equals 4 plus 2b plus c. Now for this first equation, if we subtract 4 from both sides, we get b is equal to negative 4. And we can go ahead and say that we found a value for b. For this second equation, if we subtract 4 from both sides, we get negative 4 is equal to 2b plus c. We know b is equal to negative 4, so if we plug that in for b, we're going to get negative 4 is equal to 2 times a negative 4 is a negative 8 plus c. And then if we add 8 to both sides to solve for c, we get c is equal to positive 4, and we now have a value for a, b, and c. These are the values that we want to plug in to our partial fractions decomposition. So we're going to take this value right here, this entire right hand side that we found originally, this partial fractions decomposition, and we're going to plug that in for our original function. We're going to plug that back into the integral. The only difference is that we know that a is equal to 1, so instead of a we're going to put in 1. We know b is negative 4, so instead of b we're going to put in negative 4. And we know c is positive 4, so instead of c we're going to put in positive 4. So now the original integral can be rewritten as the integral of 1 divided by x plus 2, because we have a negative 4 here, we'll say minus 4 divided by quantity x plus 2 squared, and then we'll say plus 4 divided by x plus 2 quantity cubed, and then dx. Then we'll separate each of these fractions into their own integrals. So we'll say the integral of 1 divided by x plus 2 and then dx. And then because we have a negative 4 here, we'll pull that out in front of the integral and we'll say minus 4 times the integral of 1 divided by x plus 2 quantity squared. We'll pull this constant out as well, so we'll have dx. Then we'll have plus 4 times the integral of 1 divided by x plus 2 quantity cubed dx. And now this first integral, this is easy to integrate. We know that the integral of 1 divided by something is going to be natural log of the absolute value of that denominator. So this integral becomes natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2. Then we have to apply chain rule and divide by the derivative of the denominator. But the derivative of the denominator is just 1, because the derivative of x plus 2 would be 1. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 2 is 0. So we'd have 1 plus 0, or just 1, and we'd have to divide this by 1, but of course dividing by 1 doesn't change anything, so we can just leave this as natural log absolute value of x plus 2. Then here for this second integral, what we want to do is rewrite this fraction here. So instead of 1 divided by x plus 2 quantity squared, we can change this exponent here from a positive to a negative and move this whole term to the numerator. So instead of this fraction, what we actually have is x plus 2 raised to the power negative 2 instead of positive 2. 
Now when we integrate, we're going to keep this minus 4 here, but when we integrate, we're going to use power rule, we're going to add 1 to the exponent, so we're going to get negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1, so we get times x plus 2 to the negative 1, but then we have to divide by the new exponent. So that new exponent is negative 1, we have to divide by a negative 1. So we'll divide by a negative 1, and then chain rule tells us that we have to divide by the derivative of the inside function. But again, the derivative of x plus 2 is still just 1, dividing by 1 doesn't change anything, so this is then the value of this middle integral. And then for the last integral here, we'll change this fraction to x plus 2 to the negative 3. When we move this whole term to the numerator, the exponent changes from a positive to a negative. Then when we integrate, we'll keep this positive 4, so we'll say here plus 4. We'll leave the x plus 2. We need to add 1 to the exponent, so negative 3 plus 1 is a negative 2, so we have that negative 2 exponent. Then we divide by the new exponent, so we divide by a negative 2. Then we divide by the derivative of the inside function, but the derivative is just 1, and dividing by 1 doesn't change anything, so we leave it just like this. We'll also add c now that we've taken the integral to account for the constant of integration, and then we just need to rewrite this. So here we have natural log of absolute value x plus 2, and then here we have a negative 4 divided by a negative 1. Those negative signs are going to cancel and become a positive. 4 divided by 1 is just 4, so we end up with plus 4 times quantity x plus 2 to the negative 1. And then here we have a positive 4 divided by a negative 2, that's going to give us a negative 2, so we have minus 2 times x plus 2 to the negative 2, and then plus c. And then lastly, we want to change these exponents from negatives back to positives, so our final answer will be natural log absolute value x plus 2 plus 4 divided by x plus 2, because when we move this x plus 2 to the negative 1 back to the denominator, the exponent changes from a negative to a positive, so we end up with x plus 2 to the positive 1, but x plus 2 to the first power is just x plus 2, so we end up with just the x plus 2 in the denominator. And then here we'll end up with a minus 2 divided by x plus 2 quantity squared, because this exponent goes to the denominator and becomes a positive, and then we have plus c. And this is the value of the original integral, which we found using partial fractions with repeated linear factors. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.